what's the most boring part of marriage? Long talks. Buckle up. You're in for some boredom. The episode starts with Claire changing history with a medical breakthrough. I know some people are upset about this change in history, but here's the thing. This woman traveled through time. Who cares if she makes penicillin? This is very minor. It's not like she changed the fate of the world except making them healthier quicker. Then there's a bunch of weird flashbacks. Can't say I loved this part. It shows Claire and Brie back in the 60s in Boston. In the flashback, Claire's remembering a patient she lost because of a penicillin allergy. She tested it, but he still died. And we learned that this is the reason she took the leave of absence and ended up in Scotland meeting Roger and eventually finding Jamie. The other thing I didn't love about the flashback is that Claire and Brie look basically the same age. Like, what is this? The Gilmore Girls Part 2? But the whole point of the flashback is that she used penicillin, a guy died, but hey, some good came out of it. And now she has penicillin and the twins had a tonsillectomy without anesthesia. Maybe that should be her next discovery. Roger and Brie have had a happy reunion in the bedroom, but the happiness doesn't last because Roger finds a big diamond and in his flashback, he knows where it came from. And Brie has to confess that she went to see Bonnet in prison before he supposedly died and that he gave her the diamond for the child because she told him that Jemmy was his. Roger is understandably not happy, and he does what he does, which is run away. Which, if you'll remember, is the reason she went to see Bonnet in the first place. Roger had left her high and dry. He spends the night not on the couch, but in the woods, and ends up running into Claire. And they have a long talk. And then he goes back home and has another long talk, where Brie has more revelations to share. She finally tells Roger that Stephen Bonnet is alive. The best part of this episode is the storyline that revolves around Jamie. Whereas everyone else is just milling around in their feelings and thoughts, his story moves forward. He's on the road with the governor and they're searching for Murtaugh and trying to raise an army. But this is all conflicted because the governor has decided to pardon anyone who is in Aldsmere prison, with one notable exception. Murtaugh fits Gibbons. Not good. Over a game of chess, the governor puts it together that Jamie was related to Murtaugh. And it becomes clear that Jamie's going to have to eliminate the governor or be eliminated himself. So he chokes him to death. Jamie is just one stone-cold killer this season. He covers his tracks with a smoked-out fireplace where he burned the documents and he sneaks out the window. Covering up crimes was so much easier in the colonial days. No fingerprinting. The best part is that he saves a kitten. With the exception of Jamie's storyline, it felt kind of slow and like nothing really was happening except just milling in your own thoughts and feelings. There wasn't a lot of moving the story forward. So if they're going to do that, I just hope they have more kitten next week.